Today we're talking about an immigration debate that makes Americas look like something that could be resolved if we could just fly Jerry Springer to the Capitol building for a two hour special. On the other side of the pond, we have the German government literally falling apart over an immigrant debate and Denmark setting up its increasingly sinister sounding ghetto system for dealing with immigrants. Basically, Europe's doing all sorts of crazy stuff that's getting overlooked because, I mean, Google immigration and the first five pages are practically sponsored by Trump. Today we're looking at European immigration scandals, specifically German, because I clearly don't care about clicks. So let's start with Chancellor Merkel in Germany. A German police squad mounts checks close to the Bavarian border with Austria, trying to establish the identities of the people making the journey to Germany. For months, Interior Minister Horst Seehofer has been calling for more of this sort of thing across the country. On Monday, the Chancellor Angela Merkel seemed to move in his direction. It seems like there's agreement, right? Germans can all hold hands in harmony deporting asylum seekers. That sounds familiar. This is where things get tricky though, because while you have Angela Merkel debating other German parliamentary leaders in Germany, you also have Germany debating other European leaders in the EU. But there was a big meeting over the weekend. The EU leaders have failed though to come up with a joint solution on migration after Sunday's emergency summit. While members agree on tighter borders and extra funding, the issue of how to fairly distribute asylum seekers remains a sticking point. This distribution of migrants is a huge issue because North Africans are crossing the Mediterranean Sea and landing in European countries where even citizens are trying to escape from. Hey Greece, congratulations on getting out of that debt crisis. Your prize? 13,120 asylum seekers so far in 2018. That should help you guys grow, right? So what do you do with these people, especially when Greece has an unemployment rate of 20.1%, which, even worse, is considered a victory because that's the lowest it's been since 2011. So What does this have to do with Germany though? I mean, this is a Greek problem, right? But well, some people are saying that, but people immigrate to Greece, Italy, and Spain to find a better future in Germany. German Chancellor Angela Merkel's coalition is under threat because of a major row over migrants with her interior minister, the CSU's Horst Seehofer. He wants German border police to turn back all asylum seekers without the correct documentation at the border. Merkel's CDU party have backed her view that a new deal should be agreed at EU level. She thinks going it alone would further damage relations with Italy and Greece, who've carried the greatest burden of refugees since the crisis began. That's a huge rift that we'll get into in a second. But for now, let's look to the EU as a whole. Now the EU meeting to determine a continent-wide policy for dealing with this failed because it turned into a never-ending game of immigrant hot potato. All they could do was agree on more money and tighter borders. And nobody wanted to take the immigrants. This forced Chancellor Merkel to make individual agreements with both Spain and Greece. Essentially, if an asylum seeker who enters Europe through Spain or Greece gets caught in Germany, well, back to Spain or Greece they go. Gee, it must have been compassion that got the European community to decide to stick all of the migrants in the poorest European countries, rather than their total lack of bargaining power. In exchange, Angela Merkel has said that Germany will begin allowing for family reunification between asylum seekers stuck in Greece and Spain and their family in Germany. The leader of Greece specifically said that Germany will unblock family reunification asylum requests from 2,900 families when the deal finally goes through. Now, I generally insult this sort of policy, but caught pot calling the kettle black much? Italy, on the other hand, the main port of entry for immigrants, did not want Germany to return to sender their immigrants from Italy, so they have not yet signed on to any agreement. So back to German internal politics now because the so-called migration master plan of CSU interior minister Horst Seehofer would give German border police the power to turn back all asylum seekers who lack identity papers, as well as those who have already registered elsewhere in the EU. Wait, what? Isn't that what Merkel's trying to do? 
The big difference is that Chancellor Merkel is getting permission from the port of entry countries, while the interior minister's solution is to just kick them out to the country they came from and they'll figure it out. Take Italy for example. They wouldn't agree to Angela Merkel's suggestion, so why not just... Typically, migrants enter Europe through Italy, cross over to Austria under blocked at the German border, and then sent back to Austria. Seehofer's policy would stop that, let Germany take in the migrants, and then have them return directly to Italy. Yeah, just stick them on a bus to Italy and see what happens. And you can do that too, because they're actually registered for asylum in Italy. So Merkel, why not just do that? I mean, that's a heck of a lot easier than getting consent. Well, Angela Merkel is playing a longer game involving the entirety of the EU accepting an updated version of these asylum rules that aren't so clearly designed to punish the three weakest countries in the EU. So far, what the European countries have agreed to is financing massive asylum seekers secured camps in the frontier countries that migrants usually use to enter Europe. Which, well, I guess we can't look to Europe for innovative solutions on this one, guys. The other thing they've agreed to is to continue to build offices for asylum seekers in northern Africa. Which is great for those people whose lives are in danger, but eh, it's not that urgent. I can stick around and finish the paperwork first. So this EU option sounds good on paper, but again, it's just not working out as far as migrant redistribution. Which would be like saying, writing my resume is going great. But I'm having trouble with the part where I list out my skills and previous work experience. I've determined which fonts I'm going to use and the fact that I need money, so I'm off to a good start. The trouble for Merkel is that... It doesn't look like Angela Merkel's going to be coming home particularly empty-handed, but uh, she really has to now convince the CSU party because they have said that uh, if, if this, the solution that she manages to reach isn't, isn't uh, acceptable to them, then they will go it alone from Monday and start turning away migrants from the border in Bavaria. All right, so who are these CSU people? Well, they're leaders of one of Germany's many parties. And when I say many, I mean many because Germany currently has seven parties in parliament, so that country might actually represent more political opinions than Donald Trump has on most issues. The problem is that you need to get more than 50% of elected officials to get anything done. And guess what? One party barely ever gets more than 50% of the votes, so parties have to work together or else risk being about as effective as US Congress. Currently, Chancellor Merkel's party is in a majority coalition with the Social Democratic Party and the Christian Social Union. And if either of those parties leave the coalition, she will no longer have a majority. And because remember, the Minister of the Interior, Seehofer, who wants to unilaterally kick out asylum seekers, well... As a minister, Seehofer could take the decision alone, but that would risk fracturing the coalition and lead to early elections. Right now, all of these parties are stuck in a weird sort of union where they rely on each other to stay in power and yet strongly disagree on this major issue. It's like a reality TV show for intellectuals. Thank you for setting up your government for such dramatic impact, Germany. So what happened? Well, we're not sure yet, but on July 2nd it was announced that Angela Merkel has reached a deal on migration with the rebellious interior minister Horst Seehofer. The deal contains three major points. First, asylum seekers who are another country's responsibility cannot cross the border into Germany. Furthermore, transportation centers will be set up to bus migrants to their asylum countries. Well, so far this sounds less like a compromise and more like a list of everything Interior Minister Seehofer wanted. Then you start to see Merkel effect. Because it says that these objections will happen on the basis of agreements and consensus with other countries. It ends almost entirely negating that Merkel part though, by saying that in cases where an agreement could not be met, they're still going to be rejected. So there you have it. Germany still has a government, and Chancellor Merkel still, at least in theory, has power, despite her party being the weakest it's been since the end of the Cold War. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. If you want to support nonpartisan comedic reporting, please subscribe to my channel and like below. Thank you for watching.